I never really heard that much discussion between friends about the mental health subject. And I feel like now there's so much more of an awareness. This opens up conversation that encourages people to be able to say, hey, like I'm dealing with depression or I'm dealing with anxiety or I'm dealing with many different emotions and I, I don't know how to work through this. I need help. How do I get through this? I think mental wellness and mental health can mean many things to many people, but for me, it's it's self-care and taking care of myself so I can try to be as close to my best as possible. And I say that because I feel like we're never gonna be 100%. We always have things that we're dealing with in our lives, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's both of those things kind of working together. And that certainly has been the case for me, um, dealing with endometriosis and RA um, and, and dealing with so many physical ailments. I feel like it's, at times uh, caused a lot of sadness. It's caused some anxiety in my life. Um, and that's been something that I've had to work through and learn how to navigate through as an adult. And um, it's been a challenge at times, but I feel like I've been really lucky in the fact that um, I've had the resources to be able to address these things and to be able to be as close to 100% as I can mentally. I was really um, fortunate when I was at UVA. We, um, as athletes, had the opportunity to be able to work with a sports psychologist um, really as much as we wanted to. And so being able to start that process at like the age of 19, I think was really key for me um, because I think a lot of people, I think there's a, a lot of stigma behind mental health. And um, a lot of people, when they're going through challenges, um, have a hard time opening up or addressing their feelings. And because so many of the athletes utilized working with the sports psychologist, I felt like it really kind of encouraged um, getting in there, putting in the work, um, trying to understand different emotions, feelings, things that I was going through at the time. And um, I feel like now as an adult, I have been able to have the resources in terms of being able to afford working with a sports psychologist or therapist when needed. And, you know, that's really key. I feel like a lot of times there's not a lot of access to mental health care um, for, for many, many people. And fortunately for me, that hasn't been the case. I've been able to have a lot of access, accessibility to that. Um, so that's something I'm really grateful, grateful for because I feel like I've learned so much through um, working with sports psychologists and different therapists over the years. I never really um, heard that much discussion between friends about um, the mental health subject. And I feel like now there's so much more of an awareness, there's so much more discussion. And I think that's kind of been the key for, for many um, people is this opens up conversation that encourages people to be able to say, hey, like I'm dealing with depression or I'm dealing with anxiety or I'm dealing with, uh, you know, uh, many different emotions and I, I don't know how to work through this, how, how I need help, how do I, um, how do I get through this? And I think being alone in those moments can be really crippling for people. And the fact that we've been able to open up discussion about this has um, enabled people to get the help that they need and, and for people to not feel like they're alone and to feel like they're progressing and, and making progress in their lives. You know, unfortunately, sometimes when you're, you know, having a bad day, you might not always be able to pick pick up the phone and get a hold of somebody right away. And so I think with technology, one of the nicest things is being able to have these apps that you can download and be able to do like a quick 10 to 15 minute meditation. I've done those before I go out and play um, when I'm feeling a little bit nervous or anxious. Um, I could probably benefit from doing even more. <laughs> Um, I feel like that was a new year's resolution of mine to, to do some more meditation. So I need to hold myself a little bit more accountable to that. Um, but that's one of my favorite things probably to do aside from working with the sports psychologists and therapists is, is, uh, taking time to meditate because the power of breathing, I, I know it, it's a popular subject and people are like, oh yeah, but it really does help, especially when you're feeling nervous or feeling anxious. I feel like when you can slow things down, focus on one thing and just get in a quiet spot and just kind of let the brain settle down. I feel like that's one of the best ways to get through, um, you know, times when you're just feeling a little overwhelmed. I think back to a specific um, instance last year at the French Open and 
I, I may have played like third or fourth on one day. And uh, a lot of, one of the biggest things I feel like a lot of tennis fans don't know is um, one of the biggest parts of our life is waiting and waiting to go on because in tennis, we, we really don't know when we're going to play unless there's a concrete time. And most times we're second on, third on, fourth on, could be fifth on. Cross your fingers, you're not fifth on. Um, but in this specific situation, I think I was third or fourth on. And it was a lot of waiting, a lot of long matches. Um, and I was feeling just a little bit like nervous and anxious just from sitting kind of in the same spot all day and just being like, oh, I, I think it's getting closer. And then, like, oh no, they're going to, they're going to a fifth set. So um, I think it was probably about 30 minutes before I went on. Um, I said to my mentor, Marty, I said, we're gonna go into a quiet room and we're gonna meditate. And we got the app out and we meditated for 15 minutes. And I went out and I had a great performance. Um, and I think we did it the next day and the same thing. And so um, there's been times where I really uh, like this, where I really need the meditation app, especially when waiting, cause I'm not always the most patient person. So um, yeah, sometimes the waiting can really get to me and yeah, I have to kind of slow myself down and just say, all right, let's be in the moment here and just slow things down. I feel like I, when I'm performing my best and I'm at my best mentally, I'm eliminating a lot of distractions um, and being really efficient with my time. I feel like for tennis, because of the way our schedule works and we play tournaments back to back to back to back, we're always dealing with something physically. Um, you're never gonna be close to 100%. Um, but the biggest thing is trying to be as close to 100% as you can mentally to be able to work through that. Because I've had times on court, I think Australian Open was a great example. I was dealing with a lot of back spasming. Um, and that was a real challenge for me because when you're dealing with that and you're having to think so technically about what you're doing on court and kind of put the tactics to the side and just work so that you're not putting yourself in physical pain, that's a real mental challenge to be able to try to work through that because you're thinking so much more. And that's something I've gotten better at is being aware, acknowledging these things and then learning how to try to work through them. So many people don't realize the stresses of what it takes to become a top professional athlete and the financial burden that that can, that that can cause for many, many athletes, especially if you don't come from a family that has significant funds to be able to support this type of lifestyle. And that was certainly the case for me. You know, my mother is a preschool teacher my father is a landscaper, so we didn't have uh, the type of budget that would be necessary for the type of funding that I'd need to be a, to be at this level. So I think one of the biggest roadblocks and barriers um, to build my professional career, going back to that decision, whether I was gonna go to college or turn pro, and it was a great decision for me to go to college first, but it was definitely the financial element. And I feel like there's so many people who are dealing with um, mental health issues and things related to that, that are also dealing with the financial stress. And that was certainly the case for me at one point in time. And I was really lucky to be connected with the right type, types of people who wanted to support my career. Because I think um, when you're dealing with that, I, I, I think that's one of the biggest stresses in many people's lives is financial. I feel like it's important to give back. I feel like I've had a lot of support um, over the course of my career, whether it's been, um, you know, my having a mentor like Marty or having other people that have helped me at a young age, um, whether it's been for a couple years of time or whether it's been a couple of weeks or a couple of months, I feel like adults can really have a lasting impact on kids, especially. So I have three, um, kids that I work with in my area. One's getting ready to go to college, um, one's 15 and one is 10 years old. Um, and these relationships have meant the world to me. Um, I've learned so much through mentoring. So I don't know who gets more out of this, me or these kids, um, but I always walk away feeling so rewarded because, you know, I feel like especially with the young, young kids, 
their development and growth, it happens so quickly. And I can go without seeing them for a month or two and then I come back and I feel like they've evolved and they've grown in ways that I couldn't imagine before. And so seeing all of that, I think is really cool. Um, but also just being able to share my experiences and share some of the things that I've struggled with and, and really to be like, hey, heads up about this. Like, I just wanna let you know, this is what happens if you do this, or this is what happens if, uh, you know, you, flunk out of your class. <laughs>